Today she's going to court for growing and smoking cannabis in her home. Hello. Hello. Hello, sorry, did I wake you up? <laughs> well, I just got a <laughs> Big day, hey, big day. It is. I had phone calls from quarter past four last night till half past ten from well-wishers all over the country. Some of them are travelling from Aberdeen, some are travelling from Weymouth, just to go to the court by two o'clock this afternoon. No. Honestly. Do you ever have police coming around and raiding your house looking for your drugs? Oh, yes. Do they? Come with yes, sniffer dogs? they go with... No, they've never brought sniffer dogs because if they come in here and say, where's your green, I usually tell them. But I, I did hide it somewhere and I can't remember where I put it. That's a bit of a problem. Hide it and then... <laughs> I, I do forget it all where the you time. put it. I do it all the time. You don't, would, you, would you put it in cupboards? It um, behind something. Behind, behind the washing machine? No. Can doctors prescribe it or not? Or is that actually, it's completely forbidden? Well, there are medicines available with cannabis in. There's about three. Yeah. yeah. But who wants anything with chemicals in? No. It's been interfered with. It's been created by a pharmaceutical company, and so it will have a string of side effects. Yeah. I worked it out about two, three years ago that uh, to get the most amount of pain relief, I had to try and get uh, it into perspective. Was it easier to smoke it or easier to cook it? Uh, how do you... Is it soup or tea? Or about three weeks ago, I started experimenting with chocolate. Can I have a look? Yes. Oh, that to one make looks them. gorgeous. They are gorgeous. Each one has 0.1 of a gram inside of it. That is how much you need five times a day to be pain-free 24 hours a day and to sleep. And there's no grain in it, there's nothing in it. Just... Do you sell these? No, no. Oh, you're I wouldn't not... sell them to anybody. No, you wouldn't... I've I spent... never had them. You'd be a dealer then, wouldn't you? Yeah. Would you, I mean, would you give me one? Uh, no, I wouldn't give you one, but uh, when I go and get my hot water, if you want to try one, that's your business. Would I would so give I, you one? Oh, you wouldn't give me one. If you stole one, you could keep it. I don't want stolen property in my house. Can you excuse me yes. till I go to the loo and I'll, I'll come back and get my okay. hot water. Pat escaped eviction this time, but was given a warning that if she's caught dealing or growing again, she will lose her home. She can only see the good in cannabis, but it is a drug just like alcohol, and under the influence it can do you harm, and even worse, do other people harm. Back here in Amsterdam, I want to find out which is worse, cannabis or alcohol, when it comes to harming others. Where better to find out than behind the wheel? Yeah. Nice. Rob Schmidt Definitely. is a driving instructor. We're going to perform an experiment to see what's more risky to me and other road users, being drunk or stoned. For the test, I'm going to get up to 70 kilometres per hour and then drive 400 metres at a row of baby dolls in the road. When the lights are illuminated, I have to swerve to miss them. First as a control, I'm doing it sober. My last minute reactions aren't too bad. That was great. When Nikki was sober, she got to the right speed, she braked on time, steered to the left on time, and there are no babies killed in this experiment. Next, the same thing, but this time after two large drags on a pipe containing half a gram of cannabis. I'm clearly under the influence. My aim, as before, is to reach 70 kilometres an hour to assess how quick my reactions will be. I just want this nightmare to end. Well, then we have to speed up a little. But I just can't do it. In my head, I feel I'm going really fast, about, uh, that I'm nearly out of control. The reality is different. Ooh. My judgement is terrible. Good braking. After the cannabis, She's much more cautious. She's frightened. Her sense of risk doesn't measure up to the real risk. She's a danger to herself and um, uh, those uh, on the road. Next day, I come back for part three. And I'm going to drink a bottle of wine to take me three times over the legal limit. Oh, I think I am just beginning to feel the kind of wave of the grape. 
It has numbed my brain, but in a completely different way to cannabis. Before, the cannabis unlocked fear. Now I feel fearless. Okay, you're a very handsome man. <laughs> Ooh. How naughty. <laughs> <laughs> You break the okay? cake. The baby's head is falling off. After Booth, Nikki feels like Superwoman. She thinks she's in control, but sadly she isn't. That makes her, or anyone, a really dangerous driver. According to a British medical journal report, the risk of being involved in a serious accident is six times greater when drunk and twice as great on cannabis. But both drugs seriously impair your judgment. Turns out that lots of people drive stoned but one joint, even a mild one, could cause you to have a serious accident. Get you a £5,000 fine, six months in prison, and a minimum disqualification of a year. It's not just about driving, it's also about how out of it you can get. I find it scary feeling out of control. The thing is, as a drinker I know my limits with my wine, beer and spirits, but with cannabis, I've no idea, no clue what effect it's going to have. But back in the cafe, but Bish thinks there are parallels. I usually compare them with alcohol because you have like wine or tequila or whiskies. Because that way you can sort of explain a little easier what the effect is. Because oh, it does yeah. vary a lot. Does it? Yeah, it does. So it is a bit like, so in a way you're almost like a, like a, a cannabis connoisseur, like a, a wine, it's a bit like a, being a wine connoisseur. It's like, yeah, like, yeah, exactly. And you can tell the difference between the different varieties. Of yeah. Yeah, you can give a very good uh, sort of like headline of what the effect is going to be like. So those ones over there look like, for instance, Super Silver. What's Super that? Super Silver. Have you red wine? Really? Yes. We uh, like the Ocean 12. That's more like a good cognac, I always say. It's clear, but it's, it's pretty strong. You're very chill, but you're not sleepy. And if you have more like a whiskey, which is like a macro haze, that's a little heavier. So you're still there, but you're not really moving around anymore. <laughs> and we have one thing, it's called isolator, and that's really the strongest of the strongest. And that's only crystals pressed together. And that is like a THC level of almost 50, 60%, which is really, really high. And that is definitely comparable with a half a bottle of tequila or something. Is it rubbish? Or is what she says true? In a blind test, I'm going to smoke two joints, both containing the same amount of cannabis, but one supposedly super strength and the other very mild. Will I be able to tell them apart? I've no idea which one's coming first. I think uh, what I'm going to go for is a, a mild hash tonight. The first one is the King Hassan. It's a very nice one, nice, mild, uplifting, a bit like a glass of wine, kind of. So I think this is a good one to start with. So just... To... I feel like my lips are sticking... Oh, do my lips look as if they're sticking together? Yeah, a little bit, a little bit dry. My, the whole of the inside of my mouth feels like no. it's so dry. On this one, I feel lightheaded, tipsy, like having two glasses of wine. My reaction time is not too bad. <laughs> I did it again. I just flex my shoulders and you flinch. Okay, now um, this is the, the Malika hash. This is the strongest of the hash that we have. Um, yesterday she got a, a milder version, but she doesn't know that yet. And this is really the strongest. So, um, but it's a happy one though. It's an uplifting one, but really, really strong. <laughs> Who's gonna carry her home? I'm not gonna carry you. <laughs> oh look, she's sitting there, yeah, waiting. She looks nervous. All right, that's it. Let's go and see what she thinks. Huh? I've made you a new one. Great. So it's the same amount, exactly the same amount of cannabis. It's, uh, as same yesterday. amount of hash, a yes, hash. but different kind. Right, okay.
Well, nothing for the moment, no. but we do have to wait, don't we? We have to yeah, wait. Yeah, no, you? definitely. Just, uh, well, not wait, wait, just let it happen. Okay, I'll get you a coffee. <laughs> I really feel different from yesterday. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> what did you put in that thing? <laughs> Hello. <laughs> this time, oh no. My muscles feel very heavy. My mind is like treacle. And there's a delay. I feel blind drunk and out of control. The second spliff is definitely much stronger. It may not be totally accurate, but at least their menu is a guide to what you're getting. Bye. My month in Amsterdam is over and it's time to leave. I'm a whole lot wiser, but I am still puzzled why my experience under the influence of cannabis has been so varied from freaked 